Hello students, welcome back to my channel. This is Mom Teen. Today we will be discussing about balancing chemical equations. So what is a chemical equation? A chemical equation or equations are symbolic representations of chemical reactions in which the reactants and the products are expressed in terms of their respective chemical formula. Now, what are the parts of an equation? So, given the example, we have two molecules of silver reacts with hydrogen sulfide, yields silver sulfide and hydrogen gas. So, silver and hydrogen sulfide are our reactants and silver sulfide and hydrogen gas are the products. So, we have the arrow represents the reaction symbol. So the arrow actually divides the reactant from the product. So what are the reactants and products? When we say reactant, so reactant is a chemical or the chemicals you start with before the reaction. And when we say a reactant, it is written on the left side of the equation. Product or the new chemicals formed by the reaction and usually written on the right side of the equation. So what are subscripts and coefficients? So subscript shows how many atoms of an element are in a molecule. Example, we have given the chemical formula of water, H2O. So we have here two atoms of hydrogen. And we have one atom of oxygen. So these are considered to be the subscript, the number of how many atoms of an element are in a molecule. Coefficient. So when we say coefficient, this shows how many molecules there are of a particular chemical. Okay, example, we have three molecules of water. So three here represents the number of water molecules. So this is an example of a chemical reaction. So this is what happens when hydrogen and oxygen gas combines to form water molecule. So the idea of the law or the idea of the chemical reaction is governed by the law of conservation of mass. So in a chemical reaction, matter is neither created nor destroyed. So in other words, the number and type of atoms going into a reaction must be the same as the number and type of atoms coming out. So if an equation obeys the law of conservation, it is balanced. So this is an example of a, a unbalanced or un unbalanced equation. So methane, the combustion of methane produces carbon dioxide in water molecule. So checking the number of atoms of the reactant side and the product side. So in the reactant side, we have one atom of carbon. We have four atoms of hydrogen and we have two atoms of ox oxygen. Now in the product side, we have one atom of carbon, we have two atoms of ox hydrogen, and we have two plus one, three atoms of oxygen. So checking the number of atoms of hydrogen and oxygen, so they are not balanced. So this is an example of unbalanced equation. So how to balance the equation? So we need to write coefficients to balance the equation. So take note. So let's check. We're going to write here two. Okay. So carbon, we have one, one atom of carbon. Check the number of atoms of carbon in the product side. We have one. The number of hydrogen atoms in the reactant, we have four. In the product side, we have two times two. Okay, right. We have four. And how about for our oxygen atom? So oxygen atom in the reactant side is 2 times 2. We have 4. And in the product side, we have 2 
plus 2 times 1. So, 2 plus 2, we have a total of 4 oxygen atoms. So, what are the coefficients used to balance the equation? So, since we don't have any number written before the methane, so it is understood that we have here a coefficient of 1. So, 1, 2, 1, 2. What are the rules of the game? So, number one, we need to consider that matter cannot be created or destroyed. So, subscripts cannot be added, removed, or changed. And you can only change the coefficients. Coefficients can only go in front of the chemical formulas and never in the middle of a formula. So, a few extra tips. So, try balancing big formulas first, then save free elements for last. If the same polyatomic ion appears on both sides of the equation, so it's usually okay to treat it as one unit. And there is no one particular way to balance equations. So, it's a trial and error activity. So, some equations are harder to balance than others and might require some creativity to solve. So, remember, we need to be patient when balancing an equation. So, balancing an equation given the example N2 plus H2 yields ammonia. So, nitrogen gas yields hydrogen gas. Uh, nitrogen gas added with hydrogen gas yields ammonia. So, if we're going to check nitrogen, we have two. Nitrogen in the product, we have one. So, this is unbalanced equation. So, we will be using... Uh, or we are going to write coefficients to balance the equation. Now remember, coefficients are written before the formula. And coefficients are never inserted in between. So um, another tip on how to balance the equation, if this is the case, we will try to check the number of most of the element that has the greater number of atoms. So in this case, we have hydrogen. So, hydrogen in the product, we have three, while hydrogen in the reactant, we have two. So, the elements involved, we have nitrogen and hydrogen. So, we will try to write blanks before and after the element. So, before means reactant side and after means the product side. So, given three atoms of hydrogen in the product and two atoms of hydrogen in the reactant, so, in order to balance the equation, we will be getting the LCD or the least common denominator of 3 and 2. So, the least common denominator of 3 and 2 is 6. Okay, 6. So, what number are we going to multiply with 2 to get a number 6? So, we need to multiply this one by 3. So, 3 times 2, we have 6 atoms of hydrogen in the reactants. Now, how about the number of atom of hydrogen in the product? So, since we have three atoms of hydrogen in the product, multiply this one by two. So, two times three, we have six. Now, check the number of nitrogen atom in the product. So, two times one. Okay, we have two atoms of nitrogen in the product and we have also two atoms of hydrogen in the reactant. So, we will just write one Molecule. So, what are the coefficients used to balance the equation? We have 1, 3, and 2. Okay, let's check. Okay, so nitrogen, we have 2, and hydrogen, we have 6. So, 1, 3, and 2. Okay, another example. Okay, we have potassium chlorate decomposes into potassium chloride and oxygen gas. So again, according to the rule, uh, we need to identify the number of atoms that are uh, the number of element or the element that has the greater number of atoms. So we have in this case, oxygen again. So what are the elements involved? We have potassium, chlorine, and oxygen. So, since we have three atoms of oxygen in the reactant and we have two atoms of, uh, atoms of oxygen in the product, so let's get the LCD of three and two, so it is six. So, let's try to multiply this one by two. 
So take note, coefficients are written before the compound or before the formula. So check the number of oxygen atom in the reactant. So we have 2 times 3. Okay, we have 6. So we will multiply this one by 3 to get 6. Now 3 times 2, okay, right, 6. Now how about potassium in the reactant? So 2 times 1, okay, we have 2 atoms of potassium. Then how about in the product side? So we will try to multiply this one by 2. So 2 times 1, we have 2. Now check for the number of uh, chlorine atom. A okay, number of chlorine atom. So 2 times 1, we have 2. And in the product, we have 2 times 1, we have 2. Therefore, the coefic coefficients are 2, 2, and 3. Okay. Now, let's proceed with another example. Okay, we have ethane, combustion of ethane produces carbon dioxide in water. Now, take note any combustion reaction products are always carbon dioxide in water. So, what will be the coefficients to balance the equation? So, again, balancing an equation is a trial and error activity. So, we will just try to put any numbers. Okay, so let's start with the lower number 2. Although um, hydrogen, we have 6, uh, we have hydrogen as the, num as the element having the greater number of atoms, but we will try to balance first carbon. Okay, so let's try to write here 2. Okay, so the elements involved, we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Okay, again, left line or lines before the element are considered to be um, the reactant side and the uh, line after the element are the product side. Okay, so try to count the number of carbon atom in the reactant. So 2 times 2, we have 4. Then in the product, since we have only 1, so let's try to multiply this one by 4. So 4 times 1, we have 4. Now, check for the hydrogen atom. So, 2 times 6, we have 12. In the product side, we have only 2 atoms of hydrogen. So, let's multiply this one by 6. Now, 6 times 2, we have 12. Now, how about oxygen atom in the product side? So, it's complete. So, 4 times 2, we have 8. 6 times 1, we have 6. Now, 8 plus 6, we have 14 atoms of oxygen in the product. Now, check for the number of atoms of oxygen in the reactant. So, we have 7 or we have 2 atoms of oxygen in the product, uh, in the reactant. So, multiply this by 7. So, 7 times 2, we have 14. Now, check what are the coefficients, okay? What are the coefficients used to balance the equation? So we have 2, 7, 4, and 6. Okay, another example. Iron reacts with oxygen gas, yields iron 3 oxide. So again, um, oxygen 2 in the reactant, we have oxygen in the product. So 3, 2, 3, 2, 3, okay, LCD is 6, so let's multiply this number by 3, and the other one by 2. So 3 times 2, we have 6 atoms of oxygen in the reactant, and in the product, 2 times 3, we have 6 atoms of oxygen in the product. Now, how about for the number of iron atom in the reactant? So we have 2 times 2. Uh, in the product, I mean, so number of iron atoms, okay, 2 times 2, we have 4. And in the reactant, since we have only 1, so let's write here 4. Okay, so therefore, we have the coefficients are 4, 3, and 2. Any question about balancing equation? I hope you learned something new today. God bless everyone.